Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Successful Mentalist podcast, the podcast designed to teach you the tips, the tricks, the methods and the strategies to improving your performances, growing your entertainment business and shifting your mindset for success. My name is Aidan O'Sullivan and I am joined as always by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Ashley Green. Hello. That was absolutely marvellous. I think we need to start cropping these out recording these and putting them in like a bloopers reel for youtube or something for for um, you know i'm not even going to explain it. it was weird it was very weird but can we just take a moment to appreciate before we get stuck into the content that we're now on 32 episodes 32 we've been almost going an entire year this is madness honestly i personally thought that maybe we'd do 15 20 episodes and we'd get a few people listening but then we'd dwindle it after that but we're now here in 70 plus countries across the world. We're getting so many downloads every single day, new listeners, and it's it's crazy. And we've got like a year's worth of plans ahead of us. It's absolutely madness. So before we get into this, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that is listening week on week, or even if this is your first time with us, just thank you so much for being here and listening to what we have to say. Now, if you do like what we have to say and you're not already subscribed, please do make sure to hit subscribe on your preferred podcast provider. That way you get all of the episodes, all of the updates as and when we release them every single week. So you never miss an episode and then you can just listen at your own convenience and learn and go from there. So into the content. Ashley, what are we talking about today? Oh, it's a good one because it's December, because we're festive, because Aiden's in his elf shirt, and because we're getting ready for Christmas, we want to keep these episodes relevant to what you're going to be up to. And we know there's certain shows that you might be doing, like last week we spoke about topical shows, you know, all the pros and, and cons that go with those, and, and what you need to do to really do them effectively. But today we're going to be talking about emotion. And before I say anything, and before I explain like the kind of contents of this episode, because there's a big old list, I want to ask you a question, Aiden. Well, Two, should you use emotion in your shows? And and if the answer is yes, why is it important? I'm going to start by saying one thing. I don't only wear Christmas shirts. We're recording this at the same time as last week's episode. I don't only wear Christmas shirts. This isn't like the one shirt that I've got. But anyway, yes, emotions are fundamental. And let me say that again, nice and clearly. Emotions are fundamental to your shows. If you do not have emotions in your shows, like just picture this for a moment, even if you're doing close up and anything like that, if you're not having any form of emotion, imagine that you're performing for deadpan, emotionless people that don't react. They don't laugh. They don't enjoy. They're not like clearly enjoying the show or they're not connecting with you and on it. Imagine what that is going to feel like from your perspective. Put yourself in that position. No one wants that. We don't want that. We know that you guys don't want that. And emotion is the absolute key, not only to having a good show, but it's also the key to getting more shows, having a better show, scaling up your show. It's foundational. And just for a little bit of context on that, if you want people to remember you and your shows, I promise that emotions are the absolute key. And I'm not saying that you have to go every single time like, deep sob stories or anything like that just an emotion is good enough because a short-term memory paired with an emotion gets stored as a long-term memory and the stronger that emotion when it's paired with the short-term situation that show or that routine that you're there doing the bigger the memory is going to be and and you're going to be able to get remembered for longer so yes emotions are absolutely fundamental if you're not thinking about your emotions as you're writing a show a script a routine then you are missing out perhaps the greatest tool in all of performance craft and i genuinely hand on heart i mean that and i mean that because i'm talking from experience and from what i've heard i've seen and i've done emotions are the key ashley i'm going to throw this one sort of back over to you how do you use emotions in your either your close-up or your shows and how do you embed emotion oh see i'm a weird one and i i think we can talk about the common mistakes which people pull into emotions a little bit later on but for me like i am all in like 
hundred percent percent I am committed to everything I'm doing. I'm not trying to inspire or share some great news. Like I'm physically feeling every single thing throughout the show. And that means my audience is going to feel it as well. Like if I'm if I'm feeling like shocked or or confused or, or whatever the emotion is at that time, like I'm physically feeling it. And, and this is actually a problem which I see with a lot of performers. They will do uh, an effect. And they do a piece of mind reading. It might be a dangerous stunt, uh, a funny trick, or, or it could just be a card trick or, or, or a piece of mind reading. But you can tell that they don't believe what they're doing and they're not experiencing it themselves. And and it's only like a little like 1%, 2% different. But it's it's these things, those little extra percent that you can put in that takes your shows to the next level. Like by actually experiencing the feeling yourself. It's the best way to, I, as well, get that emotion across to your audience. Like, for example, like when I'm reading minds, it's really weird. Like, I actually feel like I'm reading minds in the moment. I'm not thinking, oh, I'm doing this. Like, I genuinely feel I am real. I'm there. I can do this. And then whatever the effect is, I'm, I'm feeling that thing that I should fear. For example, um, I know there's a great thing which I want you to talk about in a minute. Um, which is talking about fear, which is going to link into something. But like, if I need to feel fear, I, I'm physically, physically feeling it. And then the audience will be able to feel that as well, right? A hundred percent. It's not something that you just have to do for the sake of it. I mean, by all means, if you if you think your 21 phase ambitious card routine or your uh, your 300 phase mind reading routine doesn't need emotion to be good fine don't bother putting it in there but we're talking from first hand experience this is powerful and actually you've you've hit the way uh, hit the nail on the head perfectly in that that's how you should have how the emotion of, should affect you as the performer because again we can boil this all the way back to say Morabian's law of like the 73855 rule of communication that idea of more of your sort of communication is excreted through your body language and you're feeling that emotion on a deep level you're going to show that through your body language your audience are going to pick up on that and they're going to feel it too it's that reciprocity that you get from it and um yeah i do kind of want to talk about um a fear as an example because that's not like a conventional approach that i mean a lot of people i think we're all familiar with this we've all seen at least two performers who's granddads gave them or showed them magic for the first time years and years ago and it changed their life because now they believe in the impossible and that is exactly why they have a card appear inside their mouth like you get the idea that's a really extreme example but that premise happens all the time the whole oh when my grandfather or my grandmother or my grandparents or my or my dad or all this and you we all follow the same stories and try to get the same emotion out of it. And the chances are it just doesn't work. It doesn't hit in the same way because again, I'm open to be proven wrong, but I believe that one of the people who really hit the nail on the head with this, this presentation and it all sort of evolved from was Copperfield. I believe that that was his approach um, way back. And he really sort of shot that angle. And now everybody wants to be copycats of Copperfield because that's, the case that everybody wants to be a, a copycat for some reason in the community but you don't need to copy what other people do to convey an emotion we've got our own stories and we've got our own lessons and experiences and by neglecting the opportunity to share those with your audience you're missing a vital rule that comes up in maximum entertainment one of the key standout points for me was convey your humanity convey your humanity be real be a genuine person and your audience will reciprocate that love and appreciation so share your own stories maybe it was the case that your grandfather got you into magic and, and spiraled this whole thing like i'm not denying that as an experience but what i am denying it as is an obvious presentation to try and get emotion does that make sense sort of so far actually that goes back to everything doesn't it it's, it's being unique and like if you see someone else do something why would you also want to do it like 
surely you want to be the best performer you can be, which then means that you have to kind of be unique and do things that maybe people haven't seen before. So copying other people's lines, even if, like you say, they are true, it's not going to cut it, really. And the problem is, even if those things are true in the stories that people tell, even if they are telling them and they are great stories, they've said it so many times that they're not feeling it and it's just kind of like, what's the point? What is the point and what's the purpose? Well, it becomes a trick then at that point, doesn't it? You you boil down your entire life experience to a trick. Yeah. And because you do it over and over and over, if you're not feeling that impact or, or, or the real emotion from that experience, you're not channeling that through you, then you just churning out tricks that you don't believe in in that sense or that you once believed in but don't resonate with you now yeah exactly like how many performers out there say beautiful story let me show you this trick beautiful story let me show you this trick beautiful story let me show you this trick and it's on and on and on and on and on and then it's beautiful story grand reveal how many people do that so many people do that and, and a lot of people do it in the context of themed shows like, like we spoke about last week that idea of maybe you don't need a theme but how about just stories and you want to be the best storyteller and you believe that the best way to tell stories is through your magic. Well, if you want to be the best storyteller, you learn storytelling and you go and tell stories. You don't try and pass it off as magic being a metaphor for all of this stuff. And again, we're openly saying these controversial things because we know a lot of people do them because we've done them ourselves. We have been through all of this and we've coming out, out of these situations realising like, damn, if we really wanted an emotion in this situation, a magic trick isn't the way to the emotion. A magic trick is sim simply the the core of what you're trying to share. It's just the, the focus point whilst you can actually excrete all of the other information from there. And we, we mentioned it a minute ago, obviously, fear as a, an emotional anchor instead. And I kind of want to give my example of this just to explain my process of embedding emotion into um, a routine, for example. And it comes down to what you said a, a minute ago about that purpose, the why are you trying to get that in? And if you haven't listened to episode three of the podcast where we talk about why do you want to do mentalism or magic or, or anything, really, I would strongly urge that you go back and listen to that episode because it's really fundamental to everything that we believe in. But why do you want to have an emotion? And the easiest way to do that is to scale back what you want that routine to do. And you boil it right down and find that essence of this is what this routine needs to do. And I'm going to give the example from one of my recent shows. I say recent, pre-COVID. I did this about a year ago, okay? This was my process from about a year ago when there wasn't a plague. I was doing the routine Hook by Eric Ross, Um Again, I'm not going to go too far into the depth, but pretty much routine was fish hook, six strings, Russian roulette in your face. That was the, the idea. And I wanted to, in that routine, naturally, as most people do, I wanted to make it like a slightly shocking or a scary piece. And I wanted to embed that fear. So that was my point one. I scaled it right back to what do I want out of this routine? Okay, I want my audience fear. And how do I building this fear in this absolute nervous energy how do i build that in here's my secret i now make the routine unpredictable and so i have these little moments that of like little oxymorons or these other little crazy ideas that are so jarring and make people like oh my god i, I didn't expect that i didn't see that coming and i'm actually now using micro surprise and micro elements of other little emotions to help really build up the experience of fear in that case and just for the full disclosure i have a, a short poem that i read at the start and it's a really beautiful poem and it really makes sense and it's got a logical tie into the routine but i'm not going to go into the depths of that but i do this beautiful poem to get everybody on my side everybody's leaning in at this point they're all listening and they all really believe in everything that i say and then i introduce the game well, I, then i bring out the fish hook with the strings and, and say that we're going to be playing a version of russian roulette and suddenly, instantly, everyone's like, oh, my God, where has this come from? I did not see this coming. I've got them on the unpredictable front. I then place the hook into my hand and explain the process, the, really exaggerating the fact that it's in my hand, in my hand, in my hand this whole time. I'm not saying it, but I'm 
using my body language to to show that. And then when it comes down to the main, the main moment in which I put it in my mouth, everybody is another moment of unpredictable. Like, oh my God, I didn't even see that coming. First of all, I didn't know that this was going to be a danger trick, nor did I realise that it's going to be a danger trick in his face. So just these little ideas are already enough to make people start thinking, oh my God, this is so unpredictable. Anything could happen. And that is perfect. That's exactly what you want in a like one of these Russian roulette routines. That was my sort of approach there. I boiled it down to what do I want the main thing to be? And then what other elements and other emotions can I use to, to build to that one clear impact? And if I hadn't done all of that, I would argue that the routine would be pretty weak. It would it would be flat and it would just be a trivial thing and people would be like, ah, yeah, he wasn't really in danger. And that's not what I wanted. So I know that's an awful lot of talking. That's a lot of like an explanation from me. But I wanted to share that you don't just have to try and overtly plug emotions. You don't have to do the big sob stories and all of that kind of stuff. Hi guys, it's Ashley here. I just want to quickly interrupt this podcast just to say one little thing. If you do enjoy the podcast that we are currently putting out at The Successful Mentalist, uh, do us a favour and make sure to subscribe. It will honestly help us out, it will mean the world, it will help with our stats and rankings which mean that we're then shown to more magicians and mentalists around the world and we want to try and help as many people as possible with these podcasts. So honestly, if you could subscribe, it would mean the absolute world to us. Anyway, Back to the podcast. Yeah. Well, I think people will pick up on it. And I think the, the element of surprise as well is something which people need to consider because so some things are just so predictable. There's actually a story, um, and you've actually loosely, loosely reminded me of something I was doing recently during my online shows. And I, uh, I start talking about how I got into mind reading through, uh, through a story and then it links into a card trick. And I suddenly realized no one really cares about talking about, oh, I got into mind reading through doing circus stuff. And then I got into card tricks and then I like poker and now I read minds like people just want to see the trick. <laughs> so I've literally taken that story, which was like only three or four minutes or so. It's now like 15 seconds. I just quickly say, oh, yeah, I got into it through this. Blah, blah, blah. Let me show you anyway. And there's bang straight in because otherwise it's just like people are. Oh. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. It's just a load of BS, isn't it? Like, what is the purpose? Like, exactly as you said, what, what is the why? So yeah, long story short, I took that out and, and the show is, is much better. I can think of another thing. And this is like, uh, it links into the talent shows like Britain's Got Talent, BGT. Like all the sob, so the sob stories that acts used, right? And it's not just BGT, it links into other talent shows, but the producers always like having them in because they say it's this emotional tie and it and it makes it fun and interesting, right? But like when you actually talk to the people watching those programs, it's the same old. It's people just saying, Oh, it's just a oh, he's gonna win, it's just a sob story. Oh, come on, another sob story. No one's feeling and, and no matter how powerful or how genuine and no matter how much emotion that person feels and even if they really convey it in the best way possible and they they was meant to convey it because that's a, a brilliant thing because it's been done so many times now people just don't care and that means they're no longer feeling that emotion and if anything you're turning them off the act so i think there's and, and it's exactly what we said last week wasn't it with topical shows there's a fine line between doing too much and too little it's finding the right ground that your audience is going to resonate with and and sometimes there can be too much of like going overboard and saying i'm going to inspire you and motivate your team in a corporate event and then doing too little of that finding the right ground and like we said last time maybe that comes with just practicing it and seeing how your audience reacts when you when you do a, a piece of magic or or when you tell a story or or when you're just performing and and you're physically feel uh feeling something right a hundred percent i think what's really interesting in in terms of the emotional side of things, when you're playing with emotions in your routines, unlike the topical shows where there's a bit more of an impact to it in terms of the wider perspective or the external perspective, with emotions, you can scale the emotions back, right back, and you've still got a foundational show that is really jam-packed with incredible magic and mind reading and, 
And it's really a, still a good show in that sense because the tricks are still solid. But then you can start building up the emotions and start playing with the emotions and playing with multiple emotions. Well, heck, I even try and play with opposing emotions at the exact same time to see if I can get half of the audience feeling one thing and the other half of the audience feeling something completely different, all from that same experience. And that gives them something to talk about. Because again, from my own personal experience, if I went to go and see a show with a friend, we watch the show or we watch the routine or we watch a clip or whatever the case may be, and we both have subjective different experiences, we're going to talk about it more. And when we talk about it more, it builds up that experience. And when we build up that experience, we talk about how we felt and our own personal interpretation of that. Bam, locked, uh, locked in the long term memory. Suddenly we're going to remember this for longer. And that is that not exactly what we want to do in our shows, right? We can use these emotions and, and become our own publicity agents long term. So what are we saying here? That if we really boil this down and look at the, the bare bones of what is the point is the whole point of emotion just to get people having a better experience of the show and ultimately remembering it and remembering you? Is that the whole point? Yes, I would. I think so. And I think so because, A, that's what's worked for me and that's really been foundational. Like, I'm no stranger to admitting that 90 to 95% of my actual paid shows and tickets sold over the past, well, over my entire performing career has been a result of the connections that I've got because I've got that emotional relationship or because there's been a key emotion that has kickstarted an entire routine. Like I have done a, like years and years ago when I was messing around early doors with magic, I did quite a dangerous routine and I used like the emotion to get a real fear response. And it turns out that the guy I performed this for, this ridiculous routine that I would never do now, I'm not going to go into the details because it was uh, wildly dangerous, but now he books me every single year. Repeat booking. He comes to my shows. We have conversations. And that is, and it refers me for other people as well because he knows how good I am because I made him feel something. And in a, this is probably a little bit of a deeper detour, but I think the point still applies. But in a world that is so stuck in instant gratification and these quick little dopamine hits, whether that's on social media or just the mindless consumption of information and dealing with all of this stuff, no one's really feeling anything anymore. We're not really delving deep into the information that we're experiencing and the experiences that we're having whilst we're watching things. And so if you can make your audience feel something, even just a little bit, or even just once, that's going to be enough to set you apart from 10 minutes of swiping on TikTok or or something crazy like that or post getting a new ton of comments on your recent post. If you can, I know they're completely different experiences or types of experiences, but the point still applies. It's the only thing differentiating the two is going to be the emotions at the end of the day and and. Long story short, yes, emotions are very important. I use them. It's one of the key things that I write into every single one of my shows to the point that I have a complete dot diagram and full map, if you like, a chart or whatever you like of the emotions that I'm trying to elicit throughout my show and how they all overlap and play together. I, I go to that extent, but you don't need to. It's not, not important to do that. So because it's coming to the end of this episode, I guess really it might be worth us kind of summarizing what we've said because we've gone all over the place with this right and kind of giving a few extra points if there's anything else we can think of and I those the first main point and we've said it all throughout this episode and just to summarize when you want your audience to experience emotion you have to feel it like be genuine like you don't put it on physically and mentally just like feel it and be in that moment that's the first point. I mean, just on that as well, I think an, for some people that aren't used to this kind of stuff, that might sound like a bit scary or like a, how do I even do that? But the easiest way to feel an emotion that you want to give is to cast your mind back to a time that you felt that emotion. Go back to a time that you felt absolutely in love with something or or, or someone or, or go cast your mind to a time that you were absolutely scared as heck in a situation 
like a specific situation cast your mind spend a minute and before you go on stage if you really want to really channel this emotion spend five ten minutes feeling that just cast your mind back to that experience run it over a few times in your mind really feel with your five senses how did it how did that feel and you can even do this in 10 seconds on stage just stop take a take a breath silence is a key thing because it it brings your audience in which we'll talk about in another episode i'm sure the power of silence but it brings your audience in and gives you that breathing space to feel the emotion so that you immediately follow up to keen eyes and ears with some powerful emotion so don't be afraid to do that on stage think about a time that you felt the emotion and share it better exactly the next point i want to bring up this is something i just thought of making it relatable to your audience because they're not going to feel that emotion right and they're not going to actually go away and remember you and, and experience what you want them to experience if they can't relate to it if you're trying to do stuff and you're either trying to inspire a message you're trying to make them fear something if they don't understand and they can't see it and they don't get it then it's not going to work and you've lost them and there's two ways that this is a problem it's a you're thinking of something which is unrelatable when only you've experienced or b what you're trying to do is probably too complicated and being too complicated is what a lot of magicians do and that that is a trap that they fall down because it's, it's hard for people to understand so being relatable is another key point that people need to bear in mind with this right completely i think as well it's okay to have experiences that no one else does so long as you realize that fact and so long as you know that this is an experience that a large majority of your audience won't be aware of and so you can use that to your advantage so explain that be honest with it just say like and i I appreciate that this not many of you will understand what what this feels like but let me let me try and put it into perspective and now you've got a brilliant opportunity to to go into a magic as a metaphor approach you can then use your magic or your mentalism or whatever you want to do in such a way so that you can convey the emotions and the way you felt in that situation and in that life experience and it becomes relatable through the magic so don't be afraid of of doing stuff that no one else has done or that no one else has experienced because that's what's going to ultimately set you apart from everybody else and make you someone special and make you someone important which is what we're going to be talking about next week, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So is there anything else that you can think of to kind of round up and summarise here? I think the real key is that, if nothing else, I think people need to start using emotion as more of a thought experiment if they're not prepared to implement straight away. And when you start thinking about what is the emotion that I'm doing, like, do this already. Here is the challenge. Do not add any emotions to your shows or your close-up repertoire right now. Do not do it. And I know you just listened to half an hour of a podcast saying, oh yeah, emotions are foundational to not only good magic, good shows, and also long-term business, but don't do any of that. Instead, take an inventory of your own experiences. Find out your strongest experiences. Write those down. Get clear on the most powerful emotional experiences in your life. And then look at magic what magic have you seen that was really good a really good use of emotion make a note of those and then start asking yourself is my material doing what i need it to is it having that emotional impact is it doing or conveying the emotions in the way that i need them to to a high enough standard so that my entire routine is just absolutely killer so that that's really sort of my aim is is to ask you guys and you listeners don't make changes until you've found out the foundations get clear on those personal experiences those subjective experiences what you've seen what you've watched what you've felt what you've done and then you'll start be you'll find natural crossovers and and you'll start to be able to play with this a lot more and if like my my final words on the subject would be to play with your emotions 100% you must do it it's foundational perfect piece of advice and i think that's a brilliant way to wrap up and i really hope that people like can actually take stuff from this and and start to implement it because it's such a powerful tool when they know how to do this properly 
Like it's just it elevates everything you do, the singular trick, the entire stage show. Um, and even like you say, like if you can use this in business, like it's powerful, isn't it? So with that in mind, I think it's a brilliant time to wrap up. Although I do want to say one thing. We mentioned it last episode, and that is are all about the tricks. We're doing these monthly lectures, and this month we're doing a very special thing because Christmas is coming. Usually with these lectures, we're teaching just one trick, but for the Christmas special, we're teaching a whole range of things. If you guys want to hear more about that, just search on our Facebook page, have a look, all the details will be on there, or just search on our website, find the details for all about the tricks. It's thesuccessfulmentalist.com. But we'll see you next week, guys, so I hope you take care. But next week, it's a really special one. And the title of the episode, I won't tell you what's in it, but it's called You Are Magic. So we'll see you next week. And remember, subscribe, like, and all of that jazz.